Right now, Hugh Downs is headed for the South Pole, doing a special 2020 report on that ice-covered continent at the bottom of the world. But before he left, Hugh put together a report on a medical problem that had plagued him and plagues four out of five Americans at some point in their lives. The problem of excruciating, incapacitating back pain. And I'll bet there isn't any one of you who doesn't know someone who suffers from it, if not yourself. Terrible pain. You can't move. I can't move at all. The position that I get in when I get my pain is just flat on my back with my legs up over something. I just can't move at all. Somehow I reach for something, bend the wrong way, and I have a terrific pain. And that stays with me for about a week or two weeks. Backache. It affects everyone from laborers to office workers to weekend gardeners. And as old and widespread a problem as it is, little is known about its causes or its cures. The major problem in back research is that different irritations within the back can create the same pain, and that's what makes diagnosis so difficult. At the bioengineering laboratories at the University of Illinois, some of the mysteries of the back are now being explored. For example, we know that improper lifting injures many backs, but we don't know why. This experiment shows how holding a 10-pound weight at arm's length rather than close to the body stresses the back muscles by 15 times. 80% of back pain is caused only by muscle spasm. And that muscle spasm can be alleviated by bed rest first. If that doesn't work, by proper exercises, uh, by changing people's habits. Examining the car seat, for example, examining the chair in which they work daily. Those are very common annoyances that aggravate back pain. Again and up. These people have sought relief at New York City's Westside YMCA's back class. The exercises are based on relaxation, flexibility, and strengthening. The Y reports that 80% of their people show improvement during the program. But there are problems other than muscular that affect the back. One of them is commonly referred to as a slipped disc. Let's take a look at the back and try to understand what that means. The spine is made up of vertebrae, which stack up along with discs in between them. When we hear the term slip disc, most of us think of a hard piece of bone cutting the spinal cord and causing paralysis. Actually, the disc is more like a jelly donut with a soft center called the nucleus and a somewhat harder outside called the annulus. As we age, the outside of the disc, the annulus, starts to wear and get brittle, just like getting gray hair or wrinkles. When this happens, the nucleus can bulge out, causing a herniation of the outside. Pressure against the nerves and ligaments can irritate them, causing pain. Irritation of the sciatic nerve can cause sciatica. That's that pain down the leg so familiar to many back sufferers. Sometimes pressure from a disc can cause a weakness in the leg, or even loss of bowel and bladder control. This is a medical emergency and should be treated immediately. Back and related leg pain can be so severe that some patients beg for a surgical cure. The most common surgical procedure on backs is a discectomy, which is the removal of the bulging or herniated pieces of the disc, relieving the pressure on the nerve. And what is confusing to doctor and patient alike is that not every herniated disc causes pain. And statistics show that most discs eventually heal themselves, even without surgery. Still, the United States has the highest back surgery rate in the world, and over 30% of our operations fail. Because of this, Leaders in the field are discouraging surgery as a cure. We say that if surgery is suggested for the first time, you certainly always ought to have two opinions. And uh, if a second operation is suggested, you ought to have three opinions. And if the third is suggested, you ought to have four opinions, etc. Augustus White, chairman of orthopedic surgery at Beth Israel Hospital in Boston. If you have someone who's saying they're going to cure you, don't worry about a thing. I, I tell my patients that uh, they probably ought to get their coat and, and go in the other direction. Stuart Belkin, an orthopedic surgeon in Bridgeport, Connecticut, has been involved in back research his entire career. Almost any time you go to a meeting where spinal surgery is discussed, there's always one lecturer who's lecturing on failed back surgery. And the number one cause of failed back surgery by far is not a technical error, uh, is not um, some problem with the patient's tissues, it's choosing the wrong patient. The right candidate for back surgery is chosen under the strictest criteria and presents the following symptoms. Severe back and sciatic nerve pain, no relief after several weeks of bed rest, and in addition has positive indications from special x-ray procedures known as myelograms and CAT scans. Even under these strict criteria, back surgery can fail, 
and leave the patient in a far sorrier state than his original condition. Dr. Belkin frankly tells his patients what risks they face from surgery. Failure to relieve pain, increased pain, loss of bowel and bladder control, loss of motor control in the lower extremities, loss of sensation, infection, spinal fluid leak, clots in legs, clots in lungs. Leaders in the field are all too aware of this list of horrors, and they are disappointed in the erratic success record of the 200,000 disc operations performed in the United States each year, especially since this study was done showing that after five years, surgical patients are not significantly better off than non-surgical patients. Now, for these reasons, the trend in back care is to seek out alternatives to surgery. We are going to show you some new methods of relief that are becoming available to severe back sufferers. One of these is being studied by Dr. Belkin in an FDA research program. It is the use of an enzyme called chymopapain, which when injected into the disc, dissolves it completely, releasing the pressure on the nerve. You can see that milky material. That's his disc. That's how fast it dissolves. The drug has been used in Canada, where 10,000 Americans have gone for help. And just recently, it was approved for use in the United States. Belkin has first-hand knowledge of the drug. He chose it over surgery when he slipped a disc. For him, the treatment was effective, leaving no after effects and no scars. John Dunlevy wishes he had known of an alternative to surgery when he hurt his back on his job as a milkman 12 years ago. Since his injury, he has had four operations. Increased nerve scarring from each operation has left him in more and more pain. Were you ever promised a, a cure uh, through surgery or that you'd be pain-free after, after an operation? Yes. Is that right? Well, I'd be fine. I never was. I never was. Dunleavy's pain was so bad that he couldn't sit, stand, or walk comfortably for any length of time. Sometimes only narcotics could relieve him. We filmed Dunleavy at Beth Israel Hospital in Boston, where he had come to their pain clinic to find some sort of relief from his pain. Dr. Carol Warfield, an anesthesiologist and head of the pain clinic, decided that the chronic burning pain in John Dunleavy's leg suggested an inflamed nerve root. In such a case, Dr. Warfield favors the injection of a steroid into what is called the epidural space at the base of the spine. In 60% of the cases chosen for this procedure, it gives relief but for someone with as many surgeries and as much nerve scarring as Dunleavy has had, the chances are not as good. Dunleavy decided that he had nothing to lose. After the injection of a local anesthetic, Dr. Warfield administers a combination of cortisone, a potent anti-inflammatory drug, and another anesthetic. Oh. Uh, it's a good sign that it's oh, just a little about uncomfortable. Time. Oh, and he's one, just right in the right spot. Another three seconds. We'll return to Dunleavy to see how the drug works. But first, let's look at another patient with a different problem. I woke up in the middle of the night and my back hurt. Abby Summersgill, a lawyer and the mother of two sons, found her very active life suddenly curtailed. I felt most comfortable in a position like that, crouched over. And of course, you can't walk around like that. Advanced technology available at Beth Israel made proper diagnosis possible. A series of special x-rays revealed a problem known as facet joint syndrome. The facet joint allows us to bend forward and back. With the natural wearing of our discs, nerves within the joints become sometimes irritated, causing pain such as Abby Summerskill experienced. This problem is often misdiagnosed and could have led to unnecessary surgery had it not been revealed by the specially angled x-rays at Beth Israel. The treatment is to inject steroids into the facet joint. This is done under fluoroscopy, a special type of x-ray. The fluoroscope is turned on only to see the position of the needle. That's to minimize exposure to the radiation. The fluoroscope can move 180 degrees around the patient, showing the doctor the needle's position from different perspectives. And once the needle is properly placed, the steroid is introduced. I hope it works. I Good. It would be three weeks before we returned to see Abby Summersgill's results. In the meantime, we went to the Walker Pain Institute in Westwood, California, where new research by Dr. Judith Walker, an anesthesiologist and neurophysiologist, shows that the stimulation of certain nerves has been successful in relieving back pain. 
Dr. Walker explains how the stimulation works. The electrical stimulation works by going up to the brain, and at the brain some powerful substances are released. One of them is already known to be serotonin, and these substances actually go back down to the spinal cord and make the spinal cord insensitive to further pain impulses. So it actually stops the pain impulses before they reach perception. If they haven't had surgery, our success rate is phenomenal. If they've had surgeries, unfortunately, the success rate is lower. It's approximately 70%. And the reason for that is that there's so much scar produced by multiple surgeries. But even for people with multiple surgery, there is hope. We visited with John Dunleavy about five weeks after his procedure. For the first time in 12 years, Dunleavy is feeling better, well enough to swim and to have some fun with his kids. So this is something of a miracle for you then, isn't it? It is, really. It just shows in my case that surgery is not the answer, complete answer to that sciatic nerve pain. Later that afternoon, we drove to Lake Winnipesaukee, where Abby Summersgill is active again <laughs> with her family. What if you hadn't hit the right person and the right diagnosis? and exploratory surgery had been recommended to you. Would you have gone through with that? I don't know. I don't like to think about it. I, I uh, would have been tremendously frightened. I don't think I would have done it. Luckily, she never had to face that decision. Two weeks after her injection, she was up on water skis, and by the time we visited her, she was really enjoying herself. I feel totally comfortable. Um, I guess there's a lot of force pulling me and a lot of tension on my back, but I don't feel it. I feel exactly the way I felt before. There's nothing wrong with my back anymore. What we've shown you doesn't mean that you're to avoid back surgery at all costs. Sometimes it is clearly the thing to do. I mentioned Hugh Downs' own back problem, and he reminded me of a time during our days together in the Today Show when he was actually in a wheelchair because of his own aching back. Now, he had surgery for it, and it was completely successful. However, if you are not the right candidate for surgery, it's good to know that alternatives are being developed.